how is the eye affected in kidney patients? This is a picture of the normal retina showing how the optic nerve, the central retinal artery and vein, and the macula look. In reality, this is how it looks. This is your optic nerve and macula, and these are the blood vessels in a normal healthy retina. We can examine the retina in various ways. One is through direct fundoscopy, indirect ophthalmoscopy, or using a slit lamp and a 78D lens. It is very important to check the retina periphery as well. So it is important to put drops in the eye of the patient to rule out conditions which can affect the periphery of the retina. As you can see in this case, there is a huge tear in the periphery of the retina with bleeding. What are the oculorenal syndromes? Number one, Alport syndrome. In Alport syndrome, the eye lens is affected. You see most of the time a bilateral anterior lenticonus. Now normally the lens is disc shaped or spherical. In this case you can see there is a conical bending of the lens. The patient also has sensory neural hearing loss. These are the other features in this syndrome. You have opacities in the cornea, you have peripheral retinal thinning and coalescing fleck retinopathy in the center of the macula. Wager syndrome, as the name implies, stands for Wilms tumor, aniridia, genitourinary abnormalities and intellectual disability. The ocular manifestations are optic nerve hypoplasia, cataract, glaucoma, and nystagmus. Now, as you can see in the first picture, the pupil is very, very large. And that's because the iris is completely missing. This is called aniridia. Very easy to make out. And the picture beside it shows optic nerve hypoplasia. The optic nerve is half the size it normally is. Von Hippel-Lindau syndrome or VHL syndrome. In this case, you see cerebellar and retinal hemangioblastomas. The picture here shows a huge tumor, reddish tumor growing from the blood vessel. This is called a hemangioblastoma, typically seen in VHL syndrome. You also see pancreatic cysts, renal cell carcinoma and pheochromocytoma. Sturge-Weber syndrome is a dermato-ocular neural syndrome. So you see conditions affecting the skin, the eye, and the brain. Now in this picture, you see a port wine stain, which is a typical nevus on one side of the face. In the second picture, you see a choroidal hemangioma. Now this is not the normal color of the retina. It is completely red because of the underlying reflex from the choroidal hemangioma. And the third picture shows a girl with glaucoma. Glaucoma has again affected only one side of the, of the body, so which is only one eye. Tuberous sclerosis complex or TSC. Angiomyolipomas or tubers affecting the brain. Adenoma sebaceum kidneys, eyes, and heart. Retinal astrocytoma is seen in this picture. This is a tumor growing on the optic nerve. This is found in 50 to 85 percent of patients. bardet badel syndrome or BBS. In this case you see obesity, pigmentary retinopathy, polydactyly, renal malformations, intellectual disability, and hypogenitalism. Ocular abnormalities include road, rod cone dystrophy. Now, in this case, this picture is a case of rod cone dystrophy. You have night blindness and eventually complete blindness. Diabetic retinopathy is one of the most common changes in the eye in patients with kidney problems. 
If you have diabetes, you need to get your retina checked up. Now, these are the stages of diabetic retinopathy. You have a very early mild stage in which we see small dots on the retina. These are yellow dots, which are cholesterol leaking on the retina, small red spots called microaneurysms. With time, this grows into a moderate stage in which you have a lot more leakage, you have lots more yellow spots and red spots all over. Now, in this case, you can also see something called CSME, which is a clinically significant macular edema. As you can see here, the macula is full of these cholesterol deposits and is also quite swollen. That's when we call it a CSME. The next stage is a severe NPDR. Here you have something called venous beading and irmas formed in the retina. By this time, blood flow is severely compromised. The stage of proliferative diabetic retinopathy or PDR is extremely dangerous because there are new vessels growing all over the optic nerve. In this picture, you can see fragile vessels growing on the optic nerve. This is called NVD or neovascularization of the disc. It is possible to see these new vessels anywhere on the retina. Fibrous bands can be seen in this uh, eye. This is a very dangerous stage of diabetic retinopathy, which requires injections and surgery. If it is not operated in time, this is the last stage of diabetic retinopathy called tractional retinal detachment. In this whole area, we see membranes pulling up the retina, causing blindness. Vitreous hemorrhage is bleeding within the vitreous cavity, which again happens due to these fragile vessels all over the retina. The investigations commonly done here are FFA and OCT. FFA is a test in which an injection, fluorescent injection, is injected into an arm vein and pictures of the retina are taken. This is meant to see the blood supply to the retina and if there are any leaking blood vessels. OCT is a simple scan which is done to see the picture of the macula in a 3D. The management of diabetic retinopathy is with pan-retinal laser photocoagulation, intravitreal injections of anti-VEGF and uh, vitrectomy surgery. Hypertensive retinopathy. There are many, many grades of hypertensive retinopathy. We'll be dealing with just one Keith Vagina Barker classification. In grade one and two, you see AV nicking and basically very narrow blood vessels. When the blood vessels become extremely narrow, you think of hypertensive retinopathy. In the next stage, you see lots of these white fluffy spots over the retina. These are called cotton wool spots. These are nothing but areas of focal ischemia. And finally, a stage of malignant hypertension where the optic nerve is immensely swollen and you have engorged blood vessels in all the, uh, the quadrants and associated macular edema forming a macular star or macular fan. This is a case of malignant hypertension and it's commonly seen in both the eyes. This is a picture again showing all the stages. Hyperoxaluria is a crystalline retinopathy. You find crystalline deposits around the macula. Eventually, it can result in a lot of pigmentation and hyperplastic RPE.